when you're growing up in life, it actually sort of matters to people how you look. And then it matters to you because it matters to others. Why? Why does it matter how you look? Because if they don't like you, then who will? If they don't accept you, then who will? And the fear that we have is that we're going to be alone. There are some things in life that are out of your control that you can't change and you've got to live with. The choice that we have, though, is either to give up or keep on going. I want to ask you, what are you going to believe? Are you going to believe in yourself? Are you going to believe everybody else's judgment on you? Are you going to believe people when they say that you're a failure? Or no one really likes you, no one really cares about you. It's the fact that people put you down. People don't even look you in the eye. I was actually born in Australia in 1982 and uh, my mum was actually a nurse so she knew all about pregnancy and delivery and she was actually in charge of the birth suite of hospitals in Australia. But when she was pregnant with her firstborn, me, they were so excited every time they did uh, an ultrasound. Oh my gosh, they, they didn't even check that I had arms and legs or not. And so when I actually was born, that's when the room went quiet and they took me away quickly. And my mom's like, what's going on? And my dad, he walks out of the room, what's going on? He says, my son, he has no arm. He said, no, your son has no arms or legs and we are so sorry. He will not walk, he will not go to school and we're sorry that you did not have an opportunity to abort your child. And so um, my dad and mom, they consolidated, they, they, they obviously wept and then my dad wanted to say to the doctors, I want to go see him because they wouldn't let my mum see me at that time. He unwrapped me and he said, he's beautiful. And so I had a loving home from the day, day one. My parents, they loved me, they encouraged me, they believed in me, they told me every day that I'm beautiful the way that I am and when I asked them what happened, why was I born this way, they said, well, we don't know why but there's a greater purpose. And it was so hard, man, I thought to myself, what kind of purpose do I have to live? I mean, are you just here to live to die? I mean, is there not a purpose for me? Is there not a purpose in life? So many people came up to me and said, Nick, I don't have a purpose. I don't know what to do in my life. If you went through your life full of pain, full of tears, and at the end of your life, you actually save somebody's life. Is your life worth living? Is the pain worth someone's life? If you could actually save somebody, can you imagine? If you actually saw somebody nearly get run over a car, you dive and get them out of the way of the car. For instance, an example, would that be worth living? You save somebody's life. Let's say that you have a problem in your life and you want to give up now. Imagine if someone 10 years older who's gone through the exact same thing that you have actually got through it and came to you and said, you know what? I know how it feels. I've been there. I've been going through what you're going through now, but I'm still here. Would that not encourage you? Could that possibly save your life? Yes. Is that not a purpose worth living for? And that's why I believe in you because that is the greatest purpose. It's to love. I love people because there is freedom and power in loving people. You have a choice every day you come to school to either tease somebody, gossip about somebody, or you can go up to them and encourage them. You can go up to somebody and say, hey, you're looking good today. When you ask them how you're doing and they say, okay, and you know they're not okay, you can say, no, really, how are you doing? Someone only takes two or three seconds to tell you something negative, but then you need to understand what am I going to do? Am I going to let that echo in my mind and start believing that echo? Or am I going to say, no, I'm not defined by how I look. I can't do this, but I can still do that. And so that's the battle in the mind that I feel like everyone goes through, whether you have arms and legs or not. Some of us are disabled with a crippling self-esteem. It's not about how weird or different or unique we are. It's about who we are on the inside. It's not about the skin. It's the uniqueness and different person I am and, and what I can offer. And when you judge someone by the cover 
and you don't open the book, you, you miss out on a good friendship. And so I, I was um, dealing with bullying and bullying has always been around. You know, when, when you have a disease that has one door into the room, only so much of the disease can come into the room. Mm. Now with social media, there are eight times more doors to come in, culturally more acceptable. Media makes that even more acceptable. It's just how it's always been. Bullying is rampant and in America I've been able to speak in front of 3 million teenagers and we've actually done in front of 290 schools anonymous surveys and I ask them sensitive questions. I get them to bow their head, close their eyes, put their hands in a fist if they say yes to my questions and the questions include have you thought of suicide, attempted suicide, attempted suicide because of a broken home or attempted suicide because of bullying at school. 40% wow. of attempted suicide in America is because of bullying. Loneliness is common to all and I really felt like I was a burden to my parents. I felt like I'd never get a job, never wow. get married. I thought even if I got married, can't even hold my wife's hand. Even if I had kids, I can't even hold them when they're crying. Uh, today, my sons, if they cry, they hold me. Today, I don't need to hold my wife's hand, I hold her heart. You don't need arms and legs for that. And so because I know that I was on the brink of giving up and I actually attempted suicide at age 10, now, bro, I had a loving home. This country doesn't have one. There are 300,000 foster kids looking for a home. There are 100,000 of them looking for adoption. Think of those kids. And we America, we think of the international missions. We have people in our own backyard who have never experienced love. I tell you, life is interesting. Life's a journey. See this phone here? Let's say that I want to go to the phone, right? And I start from over here. Now, to get to the phone, it's not like I'm going to start meditating and going hum, right, and float across the air, right? It's not going to, it's not going to work. So I have to take one step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. You can only take one step at a time. I don't care how big your step is, it's only one step at a time. You can't do two steps in one. You take steps in this direction, you take steps in that direction. You sort of get lost along the way and sometimes you fall down. You might fall down like this. So what do you do when you fall down? Get back up. Everybody knows to get back up because if I start walking, I'm not going to get anywhere. But I tell you, there are some times in life where you fall down and you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up. Do you think you have hope? Because I tell you, I'm down here, face down, and I have no arms, no legs. It should be impossible for me to get back up, but it's not. You see, I will try 100 times to get up, and if I fail 100 times, if I fail and I give up, do you think that I'm ever going to get up? No. But if I fail, I try again, and again, and again. For as long as I try, there's always that chance of getting up. And it's not the end until you've given up. And you will find that strength to get back up like this.